and with that, alrighty, so, Discovery, flashback to some odd many, many, many moons ago, which you were uh, employed by a very uh, peculiar deer-headed gentleman with golden eyes and black fur, wearing a suit and a magical cane of sorts, uh, called himself by the title of the Ringer and was owner of the Clashing Steel Coliseum that once held as a prominent centerpiece of the very city of Zareth Spire. Uh, at one time a very bustling metropolis, now a little bit less so. You, as well as a number of your compatriots, were sent on a, uh, a peculiar mission of sorts to investigate a uh, something of a mobile demiplane. Uh, which you discovered to be a rather, I suppose, infamous object of, uh, of contention known as the Jade Fortress. With that, um, your particular archaeological expertise in the situation, the fact that you were one of the few people who was intelligent and experienced enough of the first party to go out to, in fact, decipher and decode some of the ancient lore and uh, and purpose of that uh, of those who once owned the Jade Fortress, uh, you were further employed by Ringer uh, in your off time in order to go back there a number of times and make a, a couple other discoveries. Any little tidbits that you might have been able to find as far as you know understanding their history, what might have happened to them, the creatures that exist therein. Um, but while you were doing that, a second party of adventurers was, well, brought to the fortress itself, and without any proper procedures or anything like that, uh, they, as well as by extension you, lost their one and only lifeline to get back to the material plane. In a desperate attempt to, uh, well to save everyone before everybody was incinerated, and I don't remember if you were there for this particular quest. Uh, the Ringer used up the vast majority of his magic to force the Demiplane over towards the, uh, over towards Zareth Spire on the Material Plane, and kind of forcibly connected them. Now this didn't have any immediate consequences other than the ringer was put out of commission for quite some time and where the remains of his body is, nobody quite knows. Um, but you were in the middle of a very precarious dig during that time and while you didn't experience any of the, uh, the harmful side effects of the following extra planar shockwave, you did get trapped in the underside of the catacombs of the Jade Fortress for quite some time. And, and as you stayed there, for a while, new visitors, the likes of which you had not seen in the Jade Fortress before, uh, began appearing out of nowhere. Those you would definitely consider not native to the plane before. You know, you had seen your occasional other monsters. You know, there was the strange harpies and the uh, that weird dog that appeared to have been made completely entirely out of jade and that other weird goat that seemed to phase in and out of the ethereal plane. But you began to see other creatures as well. Weird, strange, goo-like monsters. Um, Celestials, fiends, and vampires, and abominations and monstrosities of all different walks of life. And as you finally made your way out of the catacombs, you realized that there was a much greater problem going, more prevalent problem going on here than just your survival and your escape. Um, as you stepped out of the Jade Fortress after weeks of being trapped in there, narrowly dodging escape and slaying the monsters you were able to take out along the way, you finally got out into the once lush green open fields of the Jade Fortress just outside of the barrier and found that uh, the entire demi-plane was slowly tearing itself apart 
and trying to use the material plane to replace it, i.e. a particularly populated patch of the material plane above the bustling city of Zareth Spire. Um, attempts to get out and warn people physically for, through the portals that were available led to very little success and you found that jumping through interplanar pockets led to more harm than good to your physical well-being after a while. Oh, I'm sure that's why she would have kept going for a while after realizing it was hurting her. Yep. Um, but with that, you had a singular shot, one means of communication to sound out something of a lifeline, uh, which you managed to take and sent a brief but rather urgent message to one of your only, at least that you know, relatives, uh, one Joy Nightshade. Do I get 25 words of something? Because she does have the knife. I'm pretty sure I prepped it. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I know she has. Actually, no, she wouldn't start with your name. Need help in race fire. Demi plane eating. Uh, Think it through. Think it through first and then, and then give it. I'm sorry. I was gone for weeks. I love you! Be careful! <laughs> Outstanding. And, Joy, you got that rather urgent message suddenly. You know, you were perusing the, um... You know, you were perusing probably the local taverns or, or whatnot, or doing whatever Joy particularly does when you would have noticed a, a notice of sorts, either personally sent to you or just probably more on a public domain. You know, looking at jobs, you would have heard, you know, rumors of the town of Zareth Spire, although you didn't have any particular connection or relationship to that town, so it's uh, it wasn't on your radar for the longest time until ooh, you got this sending from Discovery. Slightly distorted, a little bit frantic, and mentioning the name of the town. I think Joy, whatever he's doing, he just stops. You know what? Actually, I imagine him to be um, sitting sitting at a local tavern, uh, reading a book, and he just slowly looks up from the book as he like is listening to the message. And then when it ends, he just leans back in his chair and his eyes roll, and he closes the book, and then he gets up and is like, "God damn it!" It wasn't my fault this time in the message. Ooh. Yes. Well, looky who it is. Will ye be joining us this day? I will. <gasps> Secret well. fifth party member unlocked. <laughs> yeah. Yay! I was getting nervous about the balance. I said I was gonna be here. I never made the the like little thingy that I'm supposed to make, but I said I was gonna be here. Yay! Squid, yes. Yeah. <laughs> One day I'm gonna figure out how to put in that edit that is just the uh -huh. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Blank joins the battle. I was gonna just your presence is more than enough to put me mind at ease. I completely forget the the character you were intending to bring. Thank, Thank you, Devois. Devois? Du Bois? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not... I love that I also... I also... Sanctus Du Bois, not Sanctus Du Bois. <laughs> I just what? imagine like the whitest kid in the world, like throwing down the double peace signs and like. <laughs> I mean, he is. He's very white. Um, but Joy rolls his eyes. 
dramatically and leans back in his chair also dramatically. He does. And I'm 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 retconning and deciding that Sanctus is here because if Joy's going out for a drink, he probably invited Sanctus. Hold on, give me context. So Sanctus sees Joy sit up straight suddenly as he's like hearing something and then he slowly just squints his eyes as he leans back and then he just he, he sighs and lets out the most exasperated eye roll you've ever seen. Sanctus Sanctus is immediately like did Discovery do something again? You read my mind. We've gotta go get her. Somewhere called the something spiral tower. <laughs> Saint is just like, nods. would you like some assistance? If you wouldn't mind. Well, I've got time. He, he like, stands up like, like dusts off his feathers as if like dusting them off will actually ever get any of the dust out. Nods. Give me your character <laughs> sheet. <laughs> oh, uh, shut up. I am so mad because Discovery had a sending spell that she could send to Joy and she managed to say I love you and be careful and bring help and like give all the details and she forgot to include not my fault. And you had the words too. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I hit exactly 25 with. Oh, uh, by the way. You. Be careful. And uh, just because, Discovery, you did have the sending spell and you're reasonably intelligent. Like, after like the first week of being trapped in the actual confines of the fortress itself, you would have definitely had tr at least once tried the sending spell and noticed. Just tried it once a day. Yeah, tried it at least once a day. Understanding that, for some reason, it would not go off. As well as a number of other different magics, which you would have to investigate a little bit more later. Once you got outside of like this big, black, magical darkness dome that was surrounding the entirety of the structure itself, and got out into the fields, um, where there was basically a whole bunch of what appeared to be miniature singularities floating around in the skies of various different shapes, sizes and shapes, that's when the spell started to work for you. Cool. She's taking furious notes about all this, by the way. <laughs> Give me the boy. <laughs> Give me the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Give me... I'm working on it, and you see the problem is I'm a moon druid, so you're getting off of Oh, <laughs> Narrator, a goblin. You must give him your character. <laughs> I, ha I have to give him several of my character sheets. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so glad we have somebody who can cast healing spells. <laughs> reassuring him that I didn't mean to go missing for weeks and that I loved him that I was about not telling him it wasn't my fault I mean it wasn't my fault this time I know I've done things but it wasn't my fault this time I was part of the sending spell don't I get to send a message back or uh, is that a different spell you get 25 words as well alright yes. here comes the boy I'm also gonna import my. No, I'll, I'll save that for if I feel like doing it later. I might import things later, narrator, because I'm a moon group. Mm hmm. Hard work, work. Oh, alright. Tori is so mad at whoever did the Discovery is so mad at whoever did this. They're gonna get up. 
thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gonna get it. Uh, Tora, you, Tora, you feel, chill, <laughs> you feel a chill. You feel a chill go down your spine. I was there. I didn't do it. I think. <laughs> uh, uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Tell that to Discovery. Who's gonna have to deal with Joy? I mean, I know who did it. Mr. Dubois. Alrighty. Now we've got Sanctus. Awesome. Alrighty. So. Twenty-two. Nice. Alrighty. If you don't include I love you in here. She's going to be so pissed at you. When <clears throat> Discovery gets Joy's message in her head, she turns to Sam with a smug smirk and goes, Did it play me in the sending spell? The smirk <laughs> falls off. He might be trying he might be coming to play me in person though. He might do that. Oh fuck! And starts running from another monster. <laughs> Definitely. Uh and does it, does Joy Sanctus or Tori have any relationship with Jacob? I don't think Sanctus is ever missing. Alrighty. So Joy. Like hold on, maybe, me... But, but now. Nah, maybe like one quest, but nothing too special. That's fine. Alrighty. Now, yeah, Jacob. And forgive me if I kind of butcher the understanding of your character and his lineage. Your family comes from a rather uh, noble household that has had some dealings with extraplanar... Well, e you know, extraplanar conundrums in the past. Having access to a rather unique one yourself within your own family lineage. And that, you know, you occasionally go out adventuring on or send other adventurers to to come back with you know, additional information. Mm -hmm. As such, you would have definitely been contacted, your family in particular, about the, uh, about, from the officials of Zero Spire officials, about the conundrum that is this rather vicious cannibalizing demiplane that's now hanging largely above their city that they've now had to evacuate as a result. Uh, and they would have come to you pleading for your family's assistance in the matter. Um, if at all, just to at least find out why it's happening and possibly potentially a way to stop it. I'm sure this can be done. Definitely. And Jacob, you've, uh, you've uh, been able to make your way to Sarah Spire and, you know, you go to the town of, of the once bustling metropolis. It's now kind of overgrown with some vegetation. The roads are not as well as upkept as they have been, but, you know, it's only been a couple of months of dilapidation. You notice that there is this now massive looking, like, viney tree growing in the center, uh, where uh, allegedly the the once prestigious Clashing Steel Coliseum once lay um, just reaching up into the sky towards the portal itself and you know everything seems you know uh, rather rather chaotic here but you don't get much time to digest your surroundings before you notice in the distance a, uh, a rather quick lightning bolt of Furry Fury running up the side of one of the trees, uh, climbing, if you will, with extreme speeds, going, I'll save you! <laughs> as, as you see Tori, <laughs> like, like this this weird looking kind of piratey cat man like climbing up the side of the tree and then suddenly every now and again a magical vine or some sort of shadowy figure will come over and just whap him down and he'll fall it'll hit the dirt or the pavement and then just as quickly he'll flash and he'll already be back up the tree again with just this tremendous speed uh, until uh, you get close enough to call out to him Tori Baxter, is that you? Ah! <laughs> Present. Hmm. Uh. I recall adventuring with you one day. I take it you're here for the investigation as well. That uh, I, uh, I heard something like that. I wait. Are you part of it? 
please. Uh, and he will like uh, crawl on his knees and like grab your leg. Like, please take me with you. I have to get back there. I, I, I can help. I swear. Uh, I'm a courier by trade, but I, I'm pretty good as an adventurer. You need not grovel. He says with a bit of distaste at like someone begging to him. So he, he just extend a hand uh, to uh, aid him as he will lift him up onto the back of sea as well. Oh, thank you, man. Mm -hmm. You are trying to go up there. Uh, trying the optimal word. Yes, I see. Hmm. Do, do you have a way up? And he'd glance at Sieg, and Sieg sort of, like, looks at him with a just unamused grumble, and <laughs> Jacob would nod his head, no. And at this point, Joy, Sanctus, uh, having found no, no particular patronage at the tavern you were at that was of significant enough testicular fortitude, uh... Rather disappointed you would have left that tavern and have spared no time going towards Zareth Spire to find out what sort of mess Discovery has gotten herself into. And at this point... It's not her fault. <laughs> it is. It's <laughs> my fault. I was being paid. You know what? We'll have this conversation in character. <laughs> and at, at this point, you're just like, I'm just not going to waste any more time with these plebeians. So you guys make your way to Zareth Spire. Like, yeah, we'll be enough. And at this point, you would definitely see Jacob, this noble knight, riding atop this massive lion, and Tori Baxter, a uh, somewhat scraggly looking, still pretty shredded, if I remember, uh, tabaxi looking swashbuckler of sorts, kind of covered in dirt and filth at this point, and as well as red vine marks from where he's been getting his ass whooped. And this is where you four would, uh, would convene. Like the cavalry is here. What's up? Evidently. You are here for a. Joy looks up at what I can assume is the demi plane so, portals things. Or... And I don't think I've uh, done this enough justice. Presently, and you would have all been able to see this from a mile off, apart from the big 400 foot tall tree that's now growing out of the ground in twisted kind of roots digging into the earth beneath there is this massive necrotically green looking rift a massive circular swirling portal in the sky that stretches out so far it nearly encompasses the borders of the large city of Zareth Spire itself yeah he points up at that uh, we're here for that particularly because I guess it ain't my sister We are both here for this very reason. <clears throat> My condolences on your kin. Oh no, she's alive. This is a common occurrence for him. For now. Did a lot. <laughs> tilt a head, sort of like, hmm, okay, well. Right, so you two will be joining us then. In the winter Not here. No sure. Is it like stormy weather? Uh, or... it's very overcast, like, blots out, like, the, even though it's in the middle of the day, the surrounding area, after you got, you, know, you would say about halfway into the city limits, has become very strictly dim light. Um, uh, still not complete absolute darkness, and you would hear the occasional rumble of what doesn't, it's not thunder exactly, but just the occasional reverb of vast magical energies that swirl above head. <clears throat> I'm looking at ambient sounds. I'm looking at to just play. But yeah, that's yeah. it. Oh, that's the wrong thing. There we go. Alrighty. There you go. You should have access to familiar page. Awesome, thank you, bird. Well, do any of you two newcomers happen to have a way to scale this thing beyond the physical limitations of ourselves? I'm 
capable of zip climbing, but it seems like Altori here was the same, and he's still <laughs> here. Yeah. We are handed to him. Would it be beneficial to mount a gigantic bird? I can see the benefit to that, yes. I think this will nod and then proceed to wild shape into a giant bird. Yo. Like, no explanation, just bird. That's rad. Are we going giant eagle with the chat ass like 85 foot speed? Hold on. I, I want to pick, I, I want to pick the one that can carry the most people. Is that giant eagle? Uh, let me see which one has the most carrying capacity. Uh, the larger the bird, the strong, the more it should be able to carry. I think the most the big, the most big one that I have is the Petzl Coatl. I thought that was a Celestial, or unless you're talking about a different no, one. You're, you're thinking oh, that's, a oh, that's just a Coatl. My bad. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about like it's a pterodactyl looking thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna import it. I have I have my Quetzal. Hold on. Quetzal it's, it's, it's it's the Quetzal Sanctalis stat block. Quetzal Sanctalis. <laughs> it's a huge beast. Yes. Is that is that a, a thing I could perhaps? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Quetzalcoatlus is uh, yeah. the largest of the of the flying creatures yeah. of the flying beasts. So, um, in in the the instance of this. Um, I'm reflavoring it as big, big, strong raven. Okay, I have given you the big bird. Alrighty. A big bird. Will it, uh, be able to bring, uh, big boy, lion, big cat? How much does, a, how much does a lion this is usually bring? Oh. Is it a guardian wolf stat block? Yeah. yeah, I would say... I would say you could easily carry you four, Jacob, Joy, Sanctus... Or not easily, but like at the very limits, it, you could carry... Uh, no, actually, sorry, I was still looking at Sanctus. Jacob, Joy, and Tori, you could, you could definitely carry you three and still have some wiggle room. Because from what I remember, a large beast can carry two medium. So a huge beast, reasonably enough, should be ca able to carry three to four medium. Um, but another huge creature would be impossible to do while it's carrying the other three of you. What if? Yeah. Well, I am a courier. <laughs> I can lighten the load a bit as he pulls out a portable hole. Anyone need a ride? You can put me in the hole. I do guess the three of us could. An odd way, but sure. Yeah, I mean, in this case, if Jacob, Joy, and Tori jump into the for portable hole, fold it up, and then Paige brings the hole up, or, you know, he, like very easily, uh, Sanctus could also bring the hole up. And then Sanctus makes a, a relatively decent check for carrying the huge lion, I would say she could get him up there. If uh, you need. He also pulls out a potion of pill giant strength, just in case you need a little boost. Let me look at the special collateral strength. A 15. Um, yeah, yeah, might want, might, that might be beneficial for him to take that. Um, the massive raven sort of ruffles its feathers and spins up its mouth for you to pour that in. Hey, whatever it takes to get us up there, I'll do what I can. And, uh, he will give you, uh, let's see, how long does it last? 1d4? An hour, I think? I think it's an hour. Oh, right, it's a potion of growth that does 1d4. Mm-hmm. Yep, just for one hour. All right. Once he pours the potion in, he will lay down the portable hole and 
Let's get ready to fly a bear bird. Air bird. <laughs> as, a, as opposed to ground bird, like an ostrich. Hey, which, which number strength score does that give you? 21. 21. So plus 21. 5 to your thing. Okay. And I'd say with a being hu a huge sized creature and having a 21 strength, uh, I would not require a check to carry siege. Or Sieg? Yay! <clears throat> I may have accidentally killed your your dog, Jacob, by bringing it. <laughs> His dog, which is very your obviously lion. a lion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go! Tori, who's a tabaxi, which is a cat person, looks at Sieg, the lion, and says, Oh, you got a weird-looking dog. <laughs> <laughs> like a cat man <laughs> weird dog <laughs> Tori the cat person has never seen a cat he's <laughs> never looked into a mirror it's like what are you talking about I'm just a f I just have a just really a big beard yeah, yeah. If, you ever, if you ever saw if you ever saw a cat you'd be like that's a that's like a tabaxi but like on four legs weird damn nudist tabaxis <laughs> nope. cover up <laughs> Alrighty, and uh, you're not touching the tree as you climb up, are you, Sanctus? No, I'm I'm just flying. Alrighty. You look like a pelican. <laughs> Large <laughs> scale pelican. And uh, so Paige brings the folded up portable hole containing Jacob, Joy, and Tori Baxter up to the uh, large portal in the sky while the now hill giantly enhanced pterodactyl I'm just going to still call it a pterodactyl Quetzalcoatl Quetzal Quetzal Sanctus okay yeah Quetzal Sanctalotl Quetzal Sanctalus <laughs> yeah Quetzal Sanctalus uh, carries the huge lion boy into the sky and at this point, um, you would all see uh, this place, but it doesn't exactly look like this. This is the old picture, but I can't, not an artist, so uh, I guess I could, okay. I guess I could attempt an art. Like, it looks like this, but also there's this really big bubble around it. Like, I'm talking like really big bubble out of like blackness. Like, you, you just get like another one of these. There we go. Love my art is like top tier. All right. <clears throat> oh yeah, I should probably copy paste everybody to make it easier. Nope, just drew across the map. Okay. <laughs> You're doing your best. You found discovery. Let me just copy. We can go home now. <laughs> Man, no, no, easy. We still, have to, we still have to investigate the demi plant. Unfortunately. <laughs> and then Discovery coming out of the sky while you're having your own little argument with Sam Debat. You see a big pterodactyl holding a lion in its clutches and the lion just kind of like singing their limp and oh yeah, a giant raven. It's reflavored as a raven. And the lion's kind of limp, and then you see a smaller raven with a little black handkerchief in its mouth, and and both of them touch down next to you at the same time. <laughs> um, um, Sanctus, like, the raven, the giant raven makes, like, a kind of noise, and turns its head up to the smaller raven, and the smaller raven, like, like, spits out this weird, like, handkerchief thing, and, like, the hole drops onto the ground, and the raven nods its head, like, hello, it's me. Hi, where's Joy? So he's not gonna blame me for this. Feathers point I'm, at hole. I'm cute. The hole bursts open, and the three of us come out. I cannot believe that you've gotten yourself into another mess. I didn't do anything. There was an 
other is that Tree Party. I was working for Ringer. You like Ringer. You've met Ringer. He hired. He pays me very well. I was working for Ringer. I was here. I've been here several times. And then another adventuring party comes in, and now we have this. And Ringer's dead. Now we have this, and there's just this big black dome of magical darkness that's radiating this malful rift energy that's causing these singularities in the sky to get bigger. Yeah. I'm back from Tori. Discovery. Horror movie turns head to look at him. You're back? Ah, uh, yeah, I, uh... I was able to... you one of the ones who did this? What? No, uh... I have been trapped here for weeks! I haven't had a decent sleep since I was got here! And you... If it makes you feel better, look better, you look pretty good for someone who hasn't gotten decent sleep. I'm going to punch you in your face. I'm going to I'm punch you. I'm also going to punch you in your face now that I don't have to play Discovery. I swear it was... Ah, wait, hold on! And he's gonna, like, dodge. <laughs> he's gonna, like, run and dodge. <laughs> Joy doesn't actually like go for Tori, he just kind of gives him the side eye and says it. He respects it <clears> and <throat> he runs. Discoveries, there's just like an ambient magical word slowly filling up around her. Discovery, calm down. We're gonna get you out. First, we should deal with probably should, yes, because it's cannibalizing things. Anyway, um, I don't believe I've met you or you officially. I know Sanctus and Joy, of course. They're lovely. But who are you? Uh, who are you talking to? Because Tori's running. <laughs> She's pointing at both Tori and Jacob. And Sig. Tori, if you don't stop, I'm going to have Sanctus eat you. Don't make Sanctus speak to him. He might get a stomachache. Well, like a hairball. He just his head to the side and is like staring at Tori with like the cold, dead eyes of a bird of prey, of a corvid. Alright, well then Tori is going to. Bird of prey or corvid? You gotta choose one. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'm not dusk. I don't have the raven knowledge. True. Why not both? Anyways, yes, since Jacob's there and not currently being threatened. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jacob sort of, like, extends a hand to Sig's, like, mane and just, like, runs it through it. It's on right now. Uh, and, like, the huge-ass fucking lion just grumbles and, like, lies prone for a bit while Jacob, uh, turns. Uh, Jacob Lionheart, I was sent by Xerath Spire officials to investigate a cannibalistic demiplane. Uh, it seems like we are here, or that, that, whatever. It's here, and you're now on top of it, yes. Lord Lionheart, last of the Lionheart bloodline and commander of the Lion's Guard. Nice to make your acquaintance. It's good to see you are not eaten by this demiplane, it seems. Discovery How have you been was... surviving? Are you eating rations, or...? A mix of the rations and the food here at Discovery would dip into a... A somewhat formal bow. It's definitely an academic bow, if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. not very practiced, but has the knowledge. Sure. Um, Discovery Shaman Nightshade, uh, daughter, uh, ward of the archivist, uh, extraordinaire, and sister to that being bard. Blood. Yeah, we're, we're figuring Jacob, out the titles for him. Jacob would bow with, like, a hand over his heart, as all nobles should do, and he would nod his head. Very well. So the f flower you found here is edible? It is survivable. The most edible thing you found here, Discovery, were a couple of harpies, which, um... Hmm. Which were very much monstrosities, although close to humanoids. Tasted like chicken. Yeah, she, she, she does have Magnificent Mansion. Ah. She doesn't have it prepped today because she ma finally managed to get to Joy. Um, but she does have it. And, and would like, she uh, definitely tried here. And if uh, and would you have tried that spell over the weeks that you were captured? Oh, absolutely. At least. One second. 
Uh, yes. It does say extra dimensional dwelling. Okay. Yeah. So you would, so you would have found that while within the confines of the orb, your magnificent mansion would not have gone off. Hmm. I'm just. Or that one. <laughs> <laughs> how do, how does our um, how does our extra dimensional like, items work? Like, like portable, portable holes or. <laughs> toy, <bag> yeah. <laughs> So, with portable holes, presently, and bags of holding, they seem to be working. That said, you do not see, uh, yeah. Tori, uh, Discovery doesn't have any of those. So. Yeah. That said, uh, you are unsure of what the effects might be if you ventured closer into whatever rift thing that is, that's over there. Um, there. survivors you've run into? Not so much, no. There's been a lot of harpies, the occasional monstrosity, lots of running. I think I'm in better shape than I have in my entire life. Good. Is there anything that um, would make you believe that you were experiencing things that were acquired from the other planes that could have been consumed by this one? So, like portions of uh, land mass, which doesn't seem to belong. Narrator? So with that uh, discovery, let's... I'm going to have you roll in an investigation to see while you were running how well you would have been able to pay attention okay. to your surroundings. Okay. Do I get advantage because I've been here for weeks? What is your background again? Uh, archaeologist. Yes. Uh, there's the Yes. You would get advantage. Seventeen. Not super great with modifiers, but still seventeen. Oh. Alrighty. So with the seventeen. <clears throat> so Discovery, you were in the lower levels of this particular place. Um the entirety of the fortress part of the Jade Fortress itself is several dozen stories tall, as well as several dozen stories deep. You were in the deep portion of that for the majority of your two weeks, running through and attempting to avoid... Um, and attempting to avoid capture or being devoured by whatever strange, weird, eldritch monstrosities that lived down there in those catacombs was difficult enough without having to constantly stop for inquiries and curiosities into the unknown further but what you did manage to uh, get out because you again have spent several weeks here is that certain landscapes marks and places were changing specifically towards the parts that got deeper um, in fact the deeper or higher you got either higher up towards the skybox that presently has the singularities warping in it, or deeper towards, you know, whatever core of this demiplane there might be, uh, seemed to have warped to not replace what was once there, but kind of fuse and merge and combine itself with whatever new thing was incoming. However, the details of what was new incoming was... Uh, a little a bit little less important than yeah, running for my life. Definitely. But one thing that you did manage to keep with you is that you did find a surprisingly well preserved manuscript in the form of a large, I would say five foot long scroll tube. Um the one problem is is that it's not in any languages that you know but you have okay. managed to decipher some of it in your musings. Okay, would this help at all? Comprehend languages. Uh, this script kind of works along the lines of Thieves' Cant, although it is not Thieves' Cant, in that it is a mostly symbol-based text that is that gains meaning based off of context and culture rather than language symbols that mean vowels and punctuations. 
Tongues would not help there either, and I do not have Legend Yore lore yet. Um, with Power with Knowledge, no, that would not have been helpful. Uh, historical Knowledge has been somewhat helpful to you, especially in the weeks that you've been here. You've understood what some of the symbols mean, um, but presently, again, it was one of those things where it wasn't more important than your life at the time. Meanwhile, linguist would not have been helpful there. I'm just looking through my feed, seeing if there's anything that would be helpful, and it doesn't look like it. Moving on. See, like every single one of these things that you've stated, like historical knowledge, copyhead, language, tongues, legend, lord, linguist, like it just goes to show, like why you were chosen for this job. <laughs> You're like. <laughs> You are like you are like one of the most competent people for this specific mission, and but that just goes to show how incredibly obscure and difficult it is. Is that even with your vast, vast expertise, it is still mind-boggling. Mm. Alrighty. Yeah. I, I don't think that would have helped either, unfortunately. It's fine. Meanwhile, and I apologize that I forgot to say this at the beginning, um, because Joy was also supposed to get their own Joy was also supposed to get their own you know, uh, little introduction at the beginning of this uh, which I unfortunately forgot but it kind of begins to set in as you are here, Joy like once, you know, you kind of just went into like a full-fledged I'm on a mission mode until you found your sister, you found your sister and then you like, for the first time in like the last couple of days, you just <sighs> breathe a sigh of relief and then everything just seems to kind of fade out of importance for you like you know the back uh, Tori getting pecked at by Paige and Sam in the distance Sanctus watching on an amusement Jacob attempting to ask investigation and probing questions to Discovery who's also attempting to talk about her knowledge and uh, and her discoveries over the course of the last few weeks all seems to kind of blur out and fade as your gaze begins to transfix upon the slight, and I mean ever so slight, silhouette of the... Uh, of the fortress in the distance. The dome seems to clear and part for you ever so slightly, and you are able to see this magical white outline of the entire building. Um, you suddenly break out into a cold sweat as a chill goes down your uh, spine as you smell a very eerily familiar scent on the wind. That it is so faint you're not sure if it's your own imagination or paranoia, but it smells like blood. Which, considering looking at Discovery, she's not bleeding and none of your compatriots are presently injured. And... That fortress is so far away. Getting such a scent in this particular area, especially one where nobody has lived in the longest time, other than Discovery these last few weeks, that is a... Unwilling. <laughs> unwillingly. <laughs> that is a, uh, a very concerning scent to be emanating from this place. Your mind takes you back to the past few nights where you have attempted to get some rest or to meditate to regain your strength and your memories take you back to the dread domains of Strahd and while similar it's familiar in a different way this place whatever it was before as it is the first time you've been here feels like a domain of dread at the moment but conversely it also feels like oh god like a piece of the astral plane. You begin looking around as your blood hunter senses begin to try to focus and find some sort of coherence in this place, but you're too far off or they're not fine-tuned enough or you haven't been in this place long enough so that it doesn't seem to be making any reasonable logical sense at the moment. But at that very moment, you snap out of it. You suddenly realize, oh yes, I'm not here alone. Your heartbeat, which had elevated, begins to calm slightly, and you look back over towards your friends. Uh, but they, uh... And well, the probably not his heartbeat. His breath, though. 
<laughs> your your heart beated a single time and it scared you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, forgot for a second that you're no longer a tiefling, my bad. <laughs> As he tunes back in, he would see Discovery's work mode and is listing off there are harpies, strange form of elementals, uh, vampires, other monstrosities. Uh, you said vampires. Yes. None of them bit me, I'm fine. I can smell blood on the wind. That would make sense, yes. That... This... This hmm. place feels... eerie. Are any of you capable of... checking for desecration? Uh, if you give me 11 minutes and are willing to shield my... help me defend myself, I could detect some magic, but otherwise, not so much, no. Magic specifically won't help you. But <laughs> <sighs> mm. we need a place to start. A place to begin. Uh, she would... Is? We can either go towards the singularities above, or there are... The, we want... During my digs here, my expeditions, we weren't able to get to the heart of the demi-plane yet. But the singularities and the deeper you went in, the closer to the heart of the demi-plane you got, the more things were not right. You said that the the sort of darkness was over um, this white building that we're standing in front of, right? Or is there a yes. more distant It's building? a so it's so it's all one big massive couple hundred foot high like stone fortress in an incredibly dilapidated condition of which this big dome of like cloudy fog like black fog begins to swirl around ominously and it looks like its energy is feeding into the sky um, the fortress itself is the only structure and that was the building that you saw in the big white outline but as it got closer and closer towards the base the outline seemed to lose cohesion and turned and just to the earth and land beneath like there was something there but it's not it's not distinguishable from the very ground you stand on hmm. I'm drawn towards the tower I mean uh, you have to go through the tower either above or below hmm. I think we should go up you always did like to be taller I will about say about being taller <laughs> turn I... to the top Discovery ignoring that. <clears throat> I will say that uh, most of my expeditions took place underneath. I figured it would be easier to work my way up once I had cleared low. Find the heart of the deli plane, find where the. sometimes find where the oldest bits are, and those tend to be interesting. And did you clear the bottom part? <laughs> no. No, because a group of adventurers. And she just turns and looks at Tori, who is pleading with Sam, who is, like, just laughing in front of him, disappointed vibes, just radiating off. He's being respectful. He won't uh, approach Discovery unless Sam allows it. Now, uh, now let me uh, put, uh, like, a little bit of context on this, because I've only got audio with this particular recording, is that Tori... Um, Tori, out of all... Uh, out of... All five of the people here, I keep forgetting that Sanctus is here because he's presently in bird form. Um, Discovery, you were part of the first expedition to ever be here. Tori, on the other hand, was part of the second. Um, you have been passively employed uh, with the Ringer to explore areas that he knew you wouldn't be in any immediate deathly danger. The, the known portions, you know, the secured, like you guys would go in and make sure there was no monsters in that area, then kind of hold the line there so that you had time to do archaeological findings. Tori was part of a spearhead force that actually went, I believe it was, yes, uh, that went above, um, along with, what was it, Akate, 
<laughs> I'm gonna call him Wimbly Fingers, the wizard kobold who died in that expedition. Uh, it was Omniel as well. And Omniel, yes. Uh, and Omniel's gonna get his own epic quest later with Vivian. All right. <laughs> But, uh, because <laughs> I like doing things simultaneously. <laughs> Somebody's in here. Who do you think's out there fucking with the portal from the outside? Um, it was also an exit. <laughs> yes, it was also a different exit uh, with C. <laughs> yep, C is the so one that caused it. this. Yeah, C is the one who caused this. Tori, on the other hand, you guys managed to infiltrate your way all the way up to the throne. Um, but with that, when you got there, you found that the throne did have some special magical properties with controlling the uh, controlling the fortress. But when your exit was cut off, um, the person who tried to use the throne, i.e. the ringer, uh, basically disintegrated in the process of trying to use it. Um, so, and that's just a little refresher from that quest. And where his corpse went, uh, you know, there was this weird old lady that tried to fucking break his skull, which was the only thing that was remaining. And then, you know, the very kindly elven archer just kind of took it for safekeeping and he's off somewhere. Yeah, it's fine. His ringer will be back. Discovery fully believes that, but also, like, at the moment, he's dead, so... Like, so, he may be back, he's not, he's not back right now. Yes. So this presently is very much, unfortunately, now primarily your issue, Discovery. Enjoy. You feel a dark omen on the breeze. Tori, you're here for your own reason, and Jacob and Sanctus, you kind of are being dragged along for the ride. Jacob. Jacob is here for his own reason. Yes. He, oh, yes, he is. And he's definitely. investigating to end up fucking eaten. Definitely. Helping my friend's little clown sister. What's little little, clown, little clown, clown sister. Yeah. Little yeah. Clown What's so wrong with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so. Never call that. Never call Discovery that out loud. Oh. She is a disintegrate. Oh. Ready. Yeah, so this uh, is way too polite to do that. I'll call her a clown, but thank you. Yeah. Awesome. But, uh, a if anyone's oh. a clown of the two of them, it's Joy. Yes, but apologies, uh, Tori. You, uh, I forgot to just like kind of uh, reference this as a uh, memo, memo of importance is that you found in your particular expedition that went up high that the throne was important, but using the throne to do what it's supposed to cause great harm. Therefore, it seemed to have been missing pieces. Um, but yeah, that's... Because of Tori doesn't really have any expertise in that area as far as magical artifacts and understanding nope. extra planar spaces, that is kind of all you observed. <laughs> Come on, man. I, I need to tell her what happened, okay? Sam continues staring, but, like, shifts body, so there is a free path. And the moment there is, he's instantly next to Discovery, explaining Same. what has happened since uh, she's been trapped in here. Mm hmm Alright. Okay. Alright. Did you find a goo lady? You did not. No. Oh. She's be, okay. It'll be fine. Trust me. People who are dead are never actually dead. They can just come back later and annoy you. I don't think they're dead. No, it's fine. You'll be I... fine. Awkward pat, pat on the shoulder. How tall is Tori? He is, uh... Like seven feet tall? No, 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 no. <laughs> he's actually pretty short. Just about 5'2 only. Oh, so he's about Discovery's height then. Still awkward pat pat on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. But, um, while I'm here, I, I promise to give my 110% to get you guys through this tower, and I'll give as much of my service as I can, I promise. You'll be fine, right? So you said the throne seemed broken. It didn't look fun for the person sitting in it. Have I seen anything below? So, okay, let me think real quick. Uh, give me a history check. 
advantage because of your background. Oh, already <laughs> twenty-seven. Okay. So, discovery amongst the Schiffstein landscape of the catacombs, um, you found a number of points of interest: a dilapidated, not spiral, but you know, cubicle staircase that led downwards, that led into, uh, we, for lack of a better town, Death Town, USA, which you were not inclined to go to, if only for you know. You had curiosity about it, but for the sake of your own survival, it if was better I had left to lay. there and gotten killed, just because I was curious, I would have never heard the end of it. Ever. Yes. Oh, no, never. Yeah. Next place you managed to go to, the temperature dropped significantly as uh, you attempted to go into a room that had a very large set of marble double doors. Uh, with something along the lines of arcane runes and engravings inside of them, touching the <clears throat> touching the uh, the doors themselves caused some sort of process to activate that uh, a bunch of stones, like there was a cathedral leading into these double doors around the surrounding area, seemed to coalesce and begin to become something. But you didn't want to stick around for that either, so you doped out of there real quick. That said, ever since then, as you were journeying throughout the halls of the fortress, you would then hear large, heavy footsteps that one day passed you and left to the outside world. Um, but it's, And that's kind of partially what helped you get out. You never knew what was behind those doors specifically, nor down that staircase, but it was those footsteps that helped you out. Um, but it was in that cathedral of sorts that you found this particular manuscript. And now that you remember it, um, when you hear Tori speak of the throne, it brings your memory to the manuscript when you initially, well, when you initially found it. There is actually uh, something of a trifecta. Like if you take this entire scroll and roll it out, the scroll itself is about 12 feet long and five feet wide and on in kind of a triangle formation in the center of the scroll at the very top there is an insignia that now that you look at it from a different angle with the knowledge that tori has provided you it does appear to be some manner of throne and it is one of the three points of the triangle so discovery has this on her back like it's a bow staff because it's nearly as tall as she is. I think she's like 5'1 because she's 2 to 3 inches shorter than Joy when he's not wearing his heels. Um, <laughs> and she just carefully unrolls it and she shows it to Sorry? They did say that their internet may come, uh, cut out every now and then. Oh, uh, no. there we go, you're back. Died. I. Shows it to who? Sh okay, I didn't realize I had died. Uh, shows it to Tori. Like that. Uh. Can she you make tilts it slightly. Test? She tilts it slightly like it's a Mad Magazine and wiggles it. <laughs> uh, Can I make heads or tails of this? <laughs> okay. Hmm. How. Uh... Tori was not paying attention at the time. Uh, go ahead and make me, I would say, investigation or insight. Uh, sure, insight. Oh, I'm okay. I to look too over Tori's shoulder at this giant fucking piece of paper. All right, Joy, I, I I extend the same offer to you, but your check will be at disadvantage because you've never been here before, from my understanding. That's fair. Uh. uh... You said it was which one? Investigation at disadvantage? Uh, or insights, depending on which one you want. And while we're waiting on that, so Tori, um, you look at the insignia of. Uh, you look at the insignia of the uh, the throne, and you kind of squint, and your mind flashes back to that horrible day where it all happened, 
and you saw um, <clears throat> and you saw the ringer sit down in the throne and uh, grab both of the armrests on either side and wince in pain as you watched his skin begin to dissolve from head to toe uh, and he screamed something out does Tori know Abyssal? <laughs> Hold on. Or Infernal. Is this me? No, I have Common, Elvish, Giant, Primordial, and Thieves Cant. Do you remember enough of those words? Because Discovery is still a tiefling. Tori, go ahead and make me a history check with advantage. See if you can see if you can communicate the tongue properly. Uh, history. History with advantage, yes. Okay. Gamustapo. Uh. Salamat. <laughs> I think those are the words. Discovery, what that roughly translates uh, to you on your end in Infernal um, comes out to you are unworthy be gone from here and immediately after he spoke those words Tori um, and it was definitely in a tone of voice that did not seem to be a uh, to be the ringer he began disintegrating <laughs> um, but he held on just long enough to get you guys back to the material plane Discovery's gonna find like a somewhat flat stone and like take a cape and lay it down and then lay out the fucking huge manuscript with the stones on top of handkerchiefs at the corner so it doesn't roll up like, this is not on ground. Nothing ground is touching it. But... He wants to see the full triangle. So it's taking a step back after this entire sheet has been rolled out. Uh, go ahead and make me... <sighs> okay. So Discovery, you can make me either an Arcana or Religion check. At normal, anybody else can attempt the same check at disadvantage. Sorry, that's. And I still. I had it on advantage because of things. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna luck that. I'm, I won't take the 25, it will still be the 19, and I'll roll again, um, just to be fair. All but right. I, I don't think it. It's, be, it's a point better. I'll take that. Alrighty. Um, what sort of check was that? Uh, either religion, religion or... or arcana at disadvantage for anybody else except Discovery. I uh, believe maybe, in maybe. Jacob. <laughs> 20 yeah, can be a threshold. Yeah. 20 is. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. It looks like a triangle. Hey! Oh my god! Hey, <laughs> oh my god! The fighter with minus one intelligence. That's why we take those. Good god. Okay. So the threshold okay, like I, the threshold is twenty. Um I was going to give you a choice <laughs> between which point of the triangle you wanted to understand. But because two people got it. Okay, the joy, th got, the joy got it. Okay, yeah, I'll give you the whole triangle. <clears throat> Alrighty. Discovery, your eyes are bloodshot. You're tired. You've been squinting at this map for so long. Suddenly, you have been offered a new perspective um, as Jacob comes over and uh, just kind of points it in and says, uh, you're looking at the looking at the triangle upside down, and uh, he has everybody walk over so that the triangle is point down, and suddenly the images become much clearer in a way. Joy, the smell of blood off of this particular artifact is 
staggering. Nobody else seems to know it, but looking over towards the top left corner of the triangle, the bottommost point seems to be the throne that Discovery found earlier, and uh, and Discovery, you have definitely identified that as what it's been. Joy, looking over to the top left most point, you see a crown, and to you, it's uh, and to everybody else, you also see this. And because of Jacob and Discovery's great rules, you understand that the other point is now a crown. And it is, you know, of a very vibrant, uh, but still darkish tint of green. Uh, joy to you, it is a very deep blood red color. Uh, looking over at the other side, you would see a small little dowel with a little green dot at the end that with Jacob's and an exactly discovery you would see it is something of a scepter but uh, from what discovery can see the scepter is presently encased in some sort of block of ice with that uh, in your all collective knowledge you understand that there are three keys to understanding or to uh, to understanding how this place works and apparently it leads to some sort of throne of which you know generally what it does some sort of crown that exists within the fortress and some sort of scepter So this is much less of a map than it is a manuscript. This seems to have been the most recent thing that was written that you have found thus far that lay within the fortress itself. Any other old tomes or books have been turned to dust or lost to time or greatly dilapidated, but this thing seemed to have been the most recent, which to you signifies that it happened just before whatever terrible thing happened to the previous residents of the Jade Fortress, uh, which, by the way, you have also understood was an old extraplanar tribe of humanoids called the Jade Juggernauts. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get sick of tired of saying the word Jade, aren't I? Okay. <laughs> I am very uncreative with names. But with that, um, so as far as this being a map, you are unsure, but the triangle seems to have indicated what the fate of each one of these particular throw, uh, each one of these particular items was, just before whatever happened happened. The throne was broken. There is blood on the crown, and the scepter is in ice. Yeah. Ye. Yeah. and starts pulling out her maps of the dungeon because there's no way she didn't. She made a copy for Ringer, of course. She also kept a copy. Mm -hmm. It was in the contract. She made sure it was in the contract. Can I... Joy's going to make a very odd request of Sanctus. He's going to ask Sanctus to sniff the paper. <laughs> sniff the paper. Sanctus? Sanctus will lean forward and sniff the paper, of course. Uh, Sanctus, you can roll a perception or survival check. He is also okay. Here. So the reason the reason that Joy is acting san asking Sanctus to do this is is because Sanctus is also a vampire, and he mm -hmm. wants to know if it's just him yeah. smelling the blood or if Sanctus smells it as well. And Sanctus, I don't know if you're okay with revealing a lot of your backstory, but what is Sanctus's vampiric lineage? Who was Sanctus turned by? I mean, he was born a Dampier. It's actually his land. He's a pure blood, or at least half pure. Yes. Ooh. Yes, he's half pure. He's my he's my angel and devil OC, so he's half Dampier, half fallen Ace and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Ooh. He was born with both of those things. He was born a fallen because he was born half Dampier. So his on paper race is Dampier or Fallen Asimar? Fallen Asimar. 
Ooh, ooh. Okay, go ahead and roll your uh, perception and or survival. I'm sorry, this might. His lineage is not the same as Joy's. Ah, uh, yes, I know. I completely understand. Yeah, okay. Perception, you say? Yes. Mm. Or survival. Okay. Or survival. Why did that not fucking work? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Yep. Eleven. Okay. Oh, there we go. Neat. Twenty-one. Alrighty. So, Sanctus, you kind of bend down and you begin to sniff the paper, um, and you're not exactly sure what Joy's on about, but you go and you're just like, <laughs> and you give it a little bit of a sniff. There's not much coming up from the crown portion of the paper, but you get like a little bit lost in the symbols looking over it. Your peripheral vision catches the scepter and you get this very slight and faint aura of... Man, how do I make this not sound itchy? Of that which lies in your very soul. It seems... The whole point of this character is Edge. The whole yeah. point of many of my characters is Edge narrator. So imagine, so imagine, like, the slight, you know, celestial hum darkened to a, uh, mm -hmm. a very, very sorrowful midnight tone is what you hear from oh. the scepter. And it distracts you far enough so that you don't smell any particular blood on this page, but Something about that scepter calls to you. Mm -hmm. The bird kind of makes like like a face. Like it has definitely picked up on something, but perhaps not what Joy had initially expected it to. Mm -hmm. It sort of pecks its beak at the scepter. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Nito didn't expect to have anybody of even the slightest amount of holy blood. Well, actually, I did. Oh, Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I did. Um, <laughs> but uh, yours is coming. Oh, joy! Sanctus. Love that for me. Sanctus will look curiously at Joy, kind of. Like, wondering why Joy wanted it to do that in the first place. Oh, uh, because the manuscript absolutely fucking reads. Oh? It does. Bird. No, not- Bird paws. Not like that. I mean, it smells like blood. It does? Have you yeah. fed recently? D yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> You think I'm just going to come out here in in the middle of fuck off nowhere, where I could possibly see other people, maybe, and just not fucking feed myself? You've done stupid things before. I am just concerned for I you. I cannot believe you. Yes, you can. You would have asked me the exact same question. Don't even lie. No, I wouldn't have. Thank you, cause and like flaps like its wings like guys no, no bakery not right now it would be at about at this point that this happens uh over towards the massive dome of darkness uh you would all see a very noticeable flash of light it doesn't encompass the entire radius but it is noticeable enough so that it pierces the darkness for about a second followed by the crash of what feels like heavy stone and jacob to you the familiar sound of a lion's roar what okay i think that is the demi plane telling us that yes this is not a time for bickering and we better get the move on um is it literally a lion's roar or is it just akin to that it feels like go ahead and oh man this would be an investigation check to see how well you could distinguish because if it if it is a beast trying to communicate you can understand it <laughs> let's see so looking at this ooh this beast because i took it because i'm a fucking goblin 
That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Look how it's coming in, in handy now. We appreciate Goblin Tentacles. It is... Okay, so this would only require a perception check then, because it is a good distance away, at least two miles. All right, let which me is how much. loud it is. Can't tigers roar be heard up to six miles? Or cheetahs? No, it was tigers. It was tigers, yes. Mm. It's, right, it's something see. crazy, like six miles. I'm so alone. Oh, oh, look at that. Ooh. You would understand it to not, in fact, be the uh, to be a beast, but only akin to it. Okay. Gotcha. It's a dinosaur from Jurassic Park. Shh. Dad. There is there's I'm like a Daddy. moment. There's a moment of confusion as he glances about. Uh, also, I realized he could he could communicate with Song Kudus right now if need be. <laughs> yeah, why the fuck? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Good, that would be useful. That would be really I useful. So he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so he so he doesn't have to like transform back to be heard. Oh no! Yeah, big time. I think I have like at this point five hours left on this wild sheet. Oh my goodness! They last a long time. Yeah, isn't it like? How much? It's your proficiency bonus, your... and my proficiency bonus is a plus six, so... Nice. Well, you'd be a bird for a long time. Probably won't for the whole time, but for as long as <clears throat> possible. Mm -hmm. So you want to go up, and I understand that, however, I am... I know the deeds better, and according to this, thrones broken, but we have two artifacts down below, or at least we should. Just based on the manuscript. I think this will look. I think this will look at. Uh, I don't know. He's. I think he's probably on board with whatever Joy is doing because he came with Joy. <laughs> so he's looking at Joy. Jacob would say, "Well, you've been here longest, I suppose." You should know the most likely course of action for success. I'll do my best, but this place keeps changing, especially considering the sudden carnivorous tendencies it has developed. Well, we should better uh, get a move on before it changes anymore. What do you say, boss lady? Oh, no, no. She, like, uh, does again. finger guns to Discovery? Never call me that again. Joy, are you alright if we head down, or do you want to head up still? I would like to head up, but if we want to go down first, it's fine. Alrighty. I mean, if we're selling a house, it's always better to head up rather than down, but... I, I know the depth's better. Which might all make right. it... Might hey, make you it... know what? I was in a city once where to get to the top floor, you had to go into the basement. Just saying. Which adventure was this? You've been on so many, I've told me so few stories. Uh, Geerlin. As, she's, as she starts the, moving. Geerlin, the magical city to the north of where I live. Uh, there's four stories, and you can only get up to the third by going up. To get to the fourth, you have to go down, and then teleport to the top. Huh. I rather like that, actually. And she's starting to move to lead them back to where she's been spending two weeks. Alrighty. Oh, no, there's Sinkus no trauma offer, here. Sinkus will offer to act as a mount for anybody who doesn't want to walk. Uh, Discovery doesn't want to walk. <laughs> Discovery very much wants to walk because hopefully uh, this will come in handy. Yeah. Jacob will ride and on Sieg and will allow anyone who wishes to to ride on as well. And Discovery <laughs> would be at front of the pack. Ride me. Tori would be <gasps> would ask if uh, he could go up with Discovery to try and help with the uh, scouting. She let you, yeah. But with that, uh, you guys are about a, I would say yeah, you know, a good. 
probably half a mile from the dome itself. It would take you a good few minutes to reach it on mounts, uh, and upon approaching the dome itself, you would find that it, it's not solid. It's very much kind of gaseous in nature. Um, brief investigations and especially Discovery's testimony of having left it before would reveal that it's most certainly not poisonous, or at least not from brief periods of exposure. So we should be fine. Probably. <clears throat> most likely. So do you He'll be fine. So do you all wish to push through it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I trust you, Captain. Discovery kind of like slips her hand into Joy's where he's riding on top of the back and just squeezes it once before walking through. At least this time she's with her brother. Now, Discovery, you've only... Oh, go ahead. So please continue. Right. It's not, it's not immediately apparent uh, that Joy is squeezing the ever-loving shit out of Discovery's hand uh, the moment that she grabs it. Uh... But Sanctus certainly feels like, you know, Joy was like, before he was like fiddling with like one of his feathers, and then all of a sudden he was like pushing his hand, like, and like holding on really tightly mm. as they move through the mist. I think Sanctus notices it, but because he's a bird, he doesn't say anything about it, but he will kind of give you the glance. Discovery felt how tight he was squeezing her, she would not have let go. Cause, no. He he looks like the dog in the burning room where everything is fine. Oh Discovery my god. Also, you know, <laughs> Discovery looks like that times about like 10 because Joy has a decent deception and Discovery does not. Well, Discovery <laughs> kind of does, but not really. Not to Joy's level. Joy can have all this, all the deception he wants. He's he he hates mist. He hates it. Mm -hmm. There's so much trauma in the siblings. Yay! There's so much trauma in everyone here. We're all dramatic. We all have terrible. I said stories. trauma. Behold, there's drama and what are you trauma. About? <laughs> it's called total tra. tra I couldn't. I couldn't pronounce the total T and D. Trauma Island. Yeah, I <laughs> can total trauma island. Uh, which is pretty pretty accurate as you guys all step forward, or at least those of you who do, um, get hit by this wave of just absolute pure concentrated darkness and it seeps into your very souls. You each get uh, your own version of goosebumps as chills run down your spine. Uh, you begin to walk forward just a few feet. Uh, you know, the barrier couldn't possibly be more than 20 foot feet thick. But as you kind of walk v forward very carefully and very cautiously, the walk seems to take several minutes as you begin squinting and looking around for any signs of light. Um, can I get d20 rolls from everybody? Just one d20. Well, <laughs> fuck yeah, Joy! Can I, make, can I use a luck point to make him re-roll that? Not an ability nope. check. Absolutely not. It's not a I saving throw. I'm keeping that one. I'm keeping that one. Oh, hey. oh yeah. I'm holding his hand. And I'm he's keeping that to one. Think this. Out <laughs> Outstanding! I didn't even have to rig this. It's Joy. You never. <laughs> Discovery's first, like, three rolls were one, do you remember? I mean, Jacob rolled double one at an 11. <laughs> but, uh... Tell us the damage. Uh, so... Everybody, you're moving out of the inky blackness and finally stepping into, uh, into at least a somewhat little bit of light. But, Joy, the walk, the trek seems to take you a little bit longer. As you begin to hear whispers and voices in the distance, familiar ones of time since past, the stumps where your middle fingers once were on both of your hands begin to sting ever so slightly. As you hear the whisper of a very familiar voice in your ear, 
but only for a split second, enough to make you jerk over to your right shoulder and try to see desperately where it came from. As you hear, where are you going, my little fawn? 